Hey, you. Yes, you. I'm speaking directly to you today because this is important. I want you to pay close attention to this episode because it may just be one of the most important episodes that we've done in a very long time. Today's guest is about to take us on a journey into the depths of consciousness and the metaphysical that will rival the other journeys we've taken on the same topic so far. Today, we dive into the uncharted depths of our higher selves with the original Dolores Cannon modality, QHHT. What is it exactly? How does it work? How is it different than other types of hypnosis? And most important of all, how is it that this modality can be so incredibly profound that it changes lives completely with as little as a single session? You're going to get the answers to all of these questions and so much more. Whether you are a diehard skeptic or an open-minded explorer of the unknown, you won't want to miss what our guest has to share today. Get ready for a mind-bending conversation that might just challenge your understanding of reality itself. Welcome to the Skeptic Metaphysicians. My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully, we both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And, wait, you joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The, the Skeptic, Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Hey there, I'm Will, and I'm so glad that you're here today. Yes, I am indeed alone once again. But don't let that stop you from listening in, because if you do, you will absolutely kick yourself when you hear about this incredible guest I'm thrilled to be accompanied by. Jennifer Mitchell is a highly skilled practitioner of quantum healing hypnosis therapy, or QHHT for short. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking, hypnosis, haven't you covered that already? And the answer is yes, but. Bear with us, because Jennifer brings a unique perspective and expertise that might just challenge your preconceptions. Jennifer has dedicated her life to helping individuals explore the mysteries of their own mind and uncover hidden truths that conventional science and medicine often overlook. Her practice involves guiding clients into deep states of relaxation and altered consciousness where they can access past lives, higher selves, and profound insights that can lead to healing and transformation. Jennifer's clients have attested to the transformative power of QHHT and BQH. We'll get into that, what that stands for shortly, describing it as a safe space to resolve deep-seated issues and trauma and a means to connect with their souls on a profound level. With just a single session, clients experience life-altering and powerful change. If you're curious about QHHT, then you're in the right place. So sit back, relax, and join us as Jennifer shares her expertise and insights into this truly magical and immersive experience. Jennifer, welcome so much to the show. Hi, I'm so excited to be here with you today, Will, and thank you so much for the introduction. It's a pleasure. Oh, no, the pleasure is mine entirely. You know, we've been trying to go back and forth trying to get you on. We are finally have made it, divine timing has aligned, and uh, I'm excited for this conversation because it is a passion project of mine, everybody knows, because this kind of, in a way, can provide that proof that we're much more than our three-dimensional bodies if you go into it with the right mindset, right? Let's mm -hmm. just set the table. Tell us what exactly is QHHT specifically first? Absolutely. Um, so QHHT stands for Quantum Healing hypnosis technique. And I also would like to mention BQH, which is beyond quantum healing. And what that is is simply it's the online format of QHHT. So with quantum healing hypnosis, it's very different from a tr traditional hypnosis session. It's absolutely nothing like a regular um, hypnotherapy session. And the reason that it is quantum is I find time and time again with my clients, we truly are connecting in the quantum realm. And listeners might be wondering, what exactly does that mean? So there is a part inside of us, and we all have it. Some of us call it intuition. The others, you know, the higher self, the subconscious, it has many names. But it is the part inside of each and every one of us that is connected beyond this three-dimensional realm. And when I'm having a session with my clients, 
My clients will present a list of questions that they would like me to ask the higher self under hypnosis. And I find that the information is coming from a different time and place. If we ask, for instance, a time-based question, Will, it will often say, I don't understand. There's no time here. Mm. And that tells me that like, we are really connecting with that part of us that, you know, that is infinite, has all information. And the sessions are so profound and so much information comes through in this space. And I've seen such great healing occur with just a single session. Right. So you bring up a really good point when you ask people right. questions about time and they say there's no such thing. We can't answer the question. There's no time here. The people that have given you that answer, have, are mm -hmm. they tuned in with the quantum theories, with the soul level kinds of conversations? Or is this just someone that walks off the street? I'm asking only because if it's someone that's not attuned to the conversations we are having right now previously, they mm -hmm. may not give you that answer. However, if someone is, yeah. someone already knows that there really is no time in the quantum realm, then they might say that because they're kind of have that entrained in their mind. So have you found mm -hmm. that to be the case? Not necessarily. And that's a great question. Really, all it needs to have a successful session and to connect with that part of ourself is an open mind. When we can truly surrender and relax to the process of the quantum healing, where we are able to make that connection. My clients, and again, have heard that response uh, time and time again, and, and they don't know each other. And I get all different types of people that walk in. There's people who are very curious and who have never heard of Dolores Cannon, which we could talk about in a little while, or quantum healing. There's people who are very familiar. But ultimately, the success of a session and the ability to connect with that part inside of us is the ability to simply surrender to the process. I tell my clients, just give up. Don't try anything. Right. <laughs> if you are trying to give me answers and you are trying to connect, that is the conscious mind who I refer to as Mr. Ninja. He's the saboteur that likes to sneak in and like sabotage the session. We don't, I don't want you to try to do anything. Like just relax. And honestly, if you fell asleep, that's great. I've had so many clients give, have incredible sessions in between snores. <laughs> it's amazing. So it's really just the ability to surrender, let go. We also want to play with the imagination. And some people say, well, when you play with the imagination, how do I know I'm not making it up? And I, I love to address that because you know, the imagination is that creative side. When we're imagining and we're creating, we're not analyzing. And so we're in the right brain. And the right brain is the part of the mind that we want to be in, in any type of hypnosis, whether it's quantum or traditional hypnotherapy. So I tell my client to just relax. Feel free to surrender, play, and imagine. And that's all it is needed for a successful session. All right. So you brought up a couple of really good points I want to touch on really quickly before we move on. So I've got lots of questions I want to make sure we yeah. get through. But you mentioned not trying to give you an answer. And that, that's a great point mm -hmm. because I've gone through some sessions. I have not done QHHT, but I have done regular, uh, I've done past life regressions and things like that. And it, yeah. inevitably, as I'm being talked down, my mind, because I am type A type of personality, I'm going, mm -hmm. what if I don't connect? What if I can't think of anything? What if she asks me, what are you seeing? I go, I can't see nothing, right? So, so my yeah. mind is already worrying about this is, this is not going to work. How's, you know, that kind of thing. So a, releasing or surrendering, like you say, sounds great. But someone like me that has a really difficult time doing that, mm -hmm. what, what, how would you guide those people like me who I would love to experience, to have a true experience with QHHC or some sort of hypnotherapy? And I have been hypnotized before successfully, but when it comes yeah. to coming up with answers from my higher self, I don't know that mm -hmm. I've been successful at all, ever. So how could someone yeah. like me do that, achieve that besides surrendering, which is really mm -hmm. difficult for us to do? And that's really also another great question, too, because some people do struggle with that. And they, we do find in hypnosis that it is more of the type A personalities. And it's easy to say, you know, surrender. But ultimately, as a practitioner, you know, I can do my very best to get my client into that space. But also, they have to be able to let go of that part, too, and just to give up. And, you know, the, the main thing that I always tell people is just come to me like you're going to take a nap. I want you to focus on just taking a nap. Don't worry about what am I going to say next? What question am I going to ask you next? What am I looking for for you to say? We don't want any of those thoughts or worries or stress to come through. 
I do have um, a special technique that I have recently introduced into my induction process that is actually highly successful and is really helpful to help put that part of the mind away. <laughs> the Mr. Again, they call him Mr. Ninja because he's the, the one that pops up and is like, no, wait, I want to know everything that's happening. And so I do have some tools and techniques that I can use with my clients who I know are struggling. And as a practitioner, I can tell. I can tell when the analytical mind is going. And um, so it, there are some things I can do to try to trigger that creative mindset and to get them into the right brain, because that's really where we want to be for a successful session. And that's how I know that you too, that you've surrendered to the creativity and to the freedom that comes along with creativity. Right. And see someone like me, when you say th like things like that, it, it it's a mm -hmm. little triggering, not in a negative way, but, but really the skeptic in me is saying what well, you you're yeah. just saying right now let's get into the creative space so we're just imagining these things it could like science fiction mm -hmm. or fantasy writers who just it's their imagination they come out with these incredible worlds and incredible stories that are pure fiction so how is that different mm -hmm. than what i come up with under qhht reason why i say imagine is because again that releases us from the left brain it when we're in that place of freedom so when we think Think about coloring, a kid that doesn't have to color in between the lines and they can just simply be free. They can do and they can access like w all these different parts of the mind to create whatever it is that they need to create, to access whatever part of them that they need to access. And so that's why we really want to invoke that creative part of the mind so that we can let go of the left brain. A couple of reasons um, how we know that past life regression is real because my, I myself, I'm an extremely logical person. I come from a banking background. My background, you know, I spent most of my time doing processes, you know, root cause analysis, you know, working with IT. And so I, I'm a very logical person. Sometimes, you know, after a session, well, early on, not necessarily so much anymore, I used to go and look things up because I was curious. Like, did they make that ah. up? And every time that I would try to debunk something, guess what, Will? <laughs> I was found quite the contrary. Um, I'd love to give an example. Yeah. I had a client who came to me and she regressed to a lifetime as a he. And in this lifetime, she had regressed to a young soldier in the Revolutionary War. And she, you know, pops into the scene and she, the, the body will start to move. I can always tell like what is going on. And so she was very scared and the body was rising and falling. The breathing pattern had changed. So there's a lot of emotion that comes through in this space. That's one of the first keys to how we know, you know, that this is truthfully happening is the emotion that are attached to these experiences that the clients are having. Mm, interesting. Yeah. She starts to tell me she can smell the gunpowder and she's there with her childhood friend and they're scared and they just want to run. But if they run, there's people on the outskirts that will hunt them down and will bring them back. So they can't run. They don't know why they're fighting. There's dead bodies everywhere. Like she's getting very, very detailed. Like things that I'm like, can the, can the mind make this up? Mm. So we fast forward to the next scene and her childhood friend had died. And so she's standing over the body and she starts to just sob and weep. Um, and again, the outpour of emotions and she's just really missing this person who she never knew existed before we, <laughs> before we regressed. And as he was passing, he gave her this button. And the significance of the button is important because that's how I actually found that this was real. So the button was a round silver button and she ended up carrying this button. And much similar to like a child that rubs like a pinky, she carried this button throughout the rest of the war in the pocket and would rub it because it would give the soldier comfort. And the number 11, she's like, there's something engraved in this button. It, it feels like a Roman numeral. I was like, well, can you tell what it is? Because I don't want it to trigger the analyzer. So I'm like, you know, don't think too hard on it. But if you happen to know, like, what does it feel like? She's like I think it's the number 11. So like that stuck in my mind. And she ended up carrying that button and rubbing it, you know, throughout the, throughout the war in the pocket. And after the session, I decided to go and look that up. She also, let me back up, she did describe the uniform having a red sachet, it was light blue, with like a cream colored jacket. It was very specific on the description. So I went to go and try to find it. And sure enough, I found the exact uniform with the little red sachet, the light blue pants, the cream. And this article that I found, so ironic, it talked about the button. And the button, the Roman numeral 11, was engraved on the button because it signified the 11th infiltrate. 
No and way. I was like, <laughs> right, there, it, it's on it's on my website. It is a blog on my website because I was like, this is just unreal. And I, I have other stories like that too, but that one really stuck with me. And I remember writing down numeral eleven on the paper because I said, like, I gotta look this right. up. Right. And every time I try to debunk, I find the opposite. <laughs> That's amazing. That shades of many lives, many masters, right? When um, Brian Weiss I would go, oh, well, me too. Uh, it was it was a gateway drug for me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Uh, he would go and research and would find the answers uh, in, in the sessions that he was doing with his clients or his patients. So that brings up a good point. How is QHHT different than just regular, lack of a better word, past life regression therapy? I'll walk you through like a typical session. So first off, we have a, I guess I refer to it as like a spiritual counseling session. I want to get to know my clients first. And that is actually the most important part of the quantum healing session is that we talk and that the clients come ready to do the work. And I mean, like, you know, you need to be vulnerable, open up and share with me because the more comfortable that you feel telling me about your life and all your life experiences, the more comfortable your subconscious mind is going to feel talking to me. If I can't talk to you one-on-one, your subconscious mind sort of the heck is not going to come through. And so that's very, very important. That we, you know, have, you know, a discussion. I want to know everything. And there's a place that's completely judgment-free. I have heard it all. Um, when we do enter hypnosis, we do go through the first part of the session is the past life regression. Uh, we'll explore past life. The subconscious mind is really in the driver's seat. As a practitioner, I'm on the sideline. I'm going to ask questions. I close my eyes and I imagine I am there with them. I can actually start to, now that I do this work, I feel like I can see what my clients are seeing. So, uh, you know, ask fact finding questions and we talk about the people that are coming up and things like that. After the past life, we do go through the death scene because that is really important and it's nothing to fear. Um, there's, there's no pain or anything. We always, I always say, you know, you don't need to experience any pain or physical discomfort. You can watch it just like a movie. But this is oftentimes where a lot of trauma is released. We got a lot of answers about why that life came through. And then when we transition past the death scene onto the other side, well, that is where the real interesting stuff comes Oh, through. I could only imagine, yeah. <laughs> um, and yes, I find that it, first off, like the past life is like the gateway into the deeper realm of the quantum. That's how we get there, it's like the entry point, mm-hmm. right? And then so after the death experience, we do transition into definitely we're in that quantum space. And I will say like, no, just talk to me. Like, what's happening? You know, do you, are you waiting for something? Is anyone coming through? It's really important as a practitioner, a good practitioner will never lead. I ask very open-ended questions. I don't want to plant any seeds or lead anybody in any way. But I do find some of the most um, crazy thing, not crazy, crazy in a good way. I love it. <laughs> Come through. People are like, the ship is coming. I'm like, what ship? It's coming from the sky. And it's very common now a lot of people say that you know ships are coming and that they're boarding the ships to go home and i'm like well, where's home and we find that we go to other planets i have had many many people go to this red futuristic planet under hypnosis and i'm really excited to see who comes through my door and come and goes there next because i have some more questions lined up we also find two oftentimes what we call the watchers or the elders will, will appear and they wear the robes and they're, they talk to us and they give us a lot of insight and information about humanity what we're going through right now so anything is really possible in that quantum space so that's the second part of this of the session experience hence the healing we're going to call forward the subconscious mind the subconscious mind comes through and i ask for it to scan the entire body from head to toe i want the subconscious to scan the organs i want it to scan the chakras and look for anything that's not in perfect alignment any aches pains like what what is going on in the body what needs to be addressed the subconscious mind is extremely powerful it can and it will heal the body mm. I see it happen time and time again. My clients walk away pain free. Um, you know, they 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 get upgrades. Uh, it's oftentimes it's a very common question that clients will ask is, can I get you know a DNA upgrade or if I can my vibration be increased? So sometimes you know when we're scanning the body, it'll find that it can do that and it will do that. So a lot of interesting things can happen. Very common. The most common thing that comes up with the healing during that part is emotion that have been trapped and are causing illness. We find uh, time and time again, arthritis is because they're not letting go. Ooh. 
uh, of something. Ooh. Yeah, the holding on so tightly to a situation or something that happened in the past Oops. that is manifesting as arthritis. <laughs> um, um, that's... Mm -hmm. Pain in the knee. They're not moving forward. So there's uh, people tell me the same things over and over. And then the final part of the session <laughs> is the question and answers is my personal favorite part, I think, is so my clients will draft up a list of questions that they have for their um, subconscious higher self. And you can ask anything in your know, life, money, career, you know, anything that you want to know, you can put down on the, on the sheet for me. And when we're in that space, I'm going to ask those questions. Number one question is, what is my life's purpose? And I love seeing my clients get those answers. You know, they'll ask about, you know, am I in the right relationship or whatever is, is you know, that they want to know at the time and place. And they get those answers and everything's audio recorded. Mm. So they can play it all back and hear all of the advice and information. And it's, it's just yeah. amazing. So passionate about that it. That is amazing. <laughs> I can feel your passion coming through. That's, that's wonderful. <laughs> now, have you ever had uh, duds? Like uh, when someone asks, what is my purpose in life? And the answer is, you have no purpose? I haven't had anyone say there is no purpose. There are times when sometimes the subconscious mind does not come through. Mm. And that goes back to the very beginning part of the session right. when maybe I noticed that the person was a little bit closed off and they were having trouble opening up and chatting with me. And sometimes they'll say, I don't know. And when I hear, I don't know, I know that that is the analyzer. It's Mr. Ninja talking. And I do have some tools and techniques that I can, you know, pull out of my tool chest to try and really help the client. Um, get past that. And I would say 95% of the time I am successful, but ultimately it is up to the client to be able, you know, to release and access, you know, that part of the mind by, by trusting. Trust is a really big one mm -hmm. too. Um, so sometimes we get, I don't know, I don't know. And yeah, you know, I'll pull out some of the tools and we can, we can eventually get there, right. but I haven't had anybody say there, that, you know, there, there isn't one or, or something like okay. that. No, when we do make that connection, then it comes through right. and everybody's life purpose is very similar. I'm not, I'm not going to say what it is, but it's very similar. Oh no, you can't do that to <laughs> us, Jennifer. <laughs> but I assume one of your tools is called a hammer. You just a hammer over the head, plunk, knocks them out. <laughs> and no. I'm gonna <laughs> beat it out of you. We got to take a break, but when we come back, Jennifer, I'm going to hammer you on that answer. I need to know what the similarity is. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of these success stories that Jennifer has encountered and I have it from a good authority that some of these sessions actually even might be able to activate certain gifts that you have. We're going to dive into that and a whole lot more when we come back. Stay with us. And welcome back to the Skeptic Metaphysicians. I'm speaking to Jennifer Mitchell. She is a QHHT and BQH practitioner. We have barely touched on it so far, but we're going to get to it, I promise you. And we are talking about how to access the deepest parts of ourselves, our higher selves with past life regressions, with time of death experiences, as well as uh, life after life experiences. And before the break, we talked about the fact that A, we might be able to activate certain gifts so that people like <clears throat> other people that might be listening to the story, not me at all. It wouldn't be me. It's for, I'm asking for a friend, but you know, something like this might activate gifts that they might be really curious about. Right. So how does that work? It's very common. And sometimes it happens during the session and sometimes it happens after the session. So an example of during session that, um, and I, I've noticed this will more and more frequently occurring. I think that as people are doing the work and doing, you know, healing and are o more open-minded to things that I'm starting to see this happen more frequently. When we access the part of the session where I ask the subconscious mind to scan the body, very common that that is when people will become quote unquote activated. Uh, oftentimes the clients will say my hands are tingling. That, that's probably the most common one that I hear is that my hands are tingling, they're, they're on fire. And you know, and I'm like, you know, you don't need to experience any discomfort. And so, you know, we'll kind of calm that down if it is, you know, uncomfortable. And then after the session, they'll still I'll ask me, how are your hands? And they'll, and they'll say, like, I notice they're like tingling, they're vibrating. So that's actually something that is really, really common. Um, also a tingling sensation in the head, which is, you know, opening the crown chakra is uh, what I believe is, is occurring so that they can receive um, and receive or open up like the channel pathway. A lot of my clients will channel in sessions for the first time. 
and they, uh, we know that they're channeling because they'll say, you know, like, I have somebody that's here and wants, wants to talk all of a sudden. <laughs> um, but, so a lot of very interesting wow. things can pop into sessions. It can happen. Uh, just this uh, past couple of weeks, yeah, about, about two, within the last two to three weeks, I've had a couple clients reach out to me, two of them reach out to me. One client said that he has been experiencing vibration since our session. It started um, after the session. And he thought, oh, it's just, you know, the session. But then it kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And he says it's in the back of his head, like going down the spine. And then he is just vibrating all the time. And then now he's starting to body. receive messages. Oh. <laughs> and he's been channeling and he's seeing things. And so I'm like, you've been activated. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, I really don't know how else to explain that. But this is happening more and more. And I also had another friend who... Uh, to the client who she reached out recently and said the same thing that uh, she came for actually two sessions, but most people just need one. She wanted to come back and do a second. And after the second session, she's like, everything has changed. My entire life has changed. I am not the same person I was as when I walked through the door. She says, I think I'm experiencing a Kundalini awakening. Like she said that her clairs are activated. She's, um, again, sim very similar. She's starting to have, um, remember her dreams and messages and guides are coming through in her dreams. She's been writing things down. Um, she's been hearing things like uh, messages for people have been coming through. So it's like something's been opened and activated. And I'm part of the practitioner network. And a lot of us are, are experiencing this with our client. Mm, that is so exciting. Uh, it is. <laughs> uh, so then let's get to BQH. We've talked about it. We touched on it a little yeah. bit. The reason why I'm asking about BQH is because I, I'm mm -hmm. very motivated to explore these kinds of things. And you and I, we're a little far apart from each other. So it might be difficult for me to go and have a session from you in person. So mm -hmm. first of all, uh, let's go into the differences between BQH and QHH2, yeah. and then we'll go from there. Perfect. I'd love to start there. And actually to start there, I'd like to mention um, the one and only Ms. Dolores Cannon. Right. <laughs> because both of the uh, modalities are based off of the life work and, and her teaching. So QHHT, which again is quantum healing hypnosis technique, it is the original um, Dolores Cannon method. And it is the only in person is it it's available. It is formatted specifically for in-person sessions. And that is the way that the organization wants it. And it works well with the type of format that it is. So that would be the in-person session. Now, BQH, which is Beyond Quantum Healing, was actually created by Candace, who was Dolores Cannon's longtime assistant and was actually the very first practitioner that Dolores Cannon trained. And so she has incorporated a lot of the principles and the work and the techniques of Dolores Cannon and then also a couple of other things that make it flexible for online. Both sessions, whether online or in person, are highly successful. And, you know, actually, I was a little skeptical at first about you stepping into the online space for this. It really was. But you know what I found, Will, is that people relax more. What? In the comfort of what, their home. See, I've heard about this before. And yeah. when I went through the past life regression, it was it was at home and I, and I can't help but think it was that I didn't have as deep of a regression there session because I was online and not in person. Because when I've been hypnotized in person, I've gone way deep, like, whoa, kind of deep. And yet here, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm afraid someone's going to walk in or I feel awkward because I'm talking to you through a computer or I mean, there's all these different elements that make it more difficult for me. So it makes it for me, I, I would think it'd be harder to relax. But you say it's easier for some folk? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Some of my best sessions have actually been online. And I can really, I really think it's just because they feel comfortable and, you know, in their own bed or in, you know, in their own home. Yeah. And, you know, what I'm hearing, Will, when you say, like, you know, the technology and the computer, that's Mr. Ninja. <laughs> that, that's the analyzer right there running. Damn and, it, uh, Ninja. So, Get yeah. away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ninja, he pops up a yeah. lot. So yeah, that's like the analytical mind, like wanting to analyze, like you know, the process. And so, you know, again, it's about you know, trying to overcome that, not trying, but just overcoming that mm. by you know, surrendering. And I know I say that a lot, but hypnosis is very easy, and quantum hypnosis, you know, is easy as well. And the truth is, is every single person is already in that state of mind two times a day. 
So when you're falling asleep at night, well, it's that part of the mind, like right as you drift, right before you drift off, maybe a thought pops in your head or an image where you see some symbols or something. It's happened to me where I pop up and I'm like, oh my gosh, like what, 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 what just happened? And then I, I realized, oh, we're starting to dream. That is right where we work mm. in that space. So everybody can access that. If you can fall asleep, you can access that. And then again, you experience it in the morning when you're waking up and you're kind of semi-aware, like, okay, I'm waking up. Oh, I have to start my day. But do you want to drift back to sleep? And it's that in-between state. Yeah. So everyone has the ability to get there, but it is whether or not the mind can allow allow it to get to that, that place. M- with their practice. That might explain a lot because I literally, the, the time when I'm drifting off to sleep is so minute. Like I put my head on the pillow and I'm, gone i am so far like asleep in two seconds so so that that space is very very small yeah. same with waking up my yeah. alarm goes off and i turn, turn it off and so i don't oh you know what it is oh, <laughs> my husband like springs up and yeah i'm like every time oh, oh my gosh I'm like, yes I, I, get, I just get i just get jolted out of out of sleep um no. damn, <laughs> damn but so that so maybe it's because i'm not used to being in that space that it's so foreign to me I, i'm just throwing out hypothetical situations yeah. or, you know, hypotheses, I guess is probably a better word. But You know, also something that I find is true too is we've got to be aware of the programs that we tell ourselves. If we tell ourselves, I struggle, you know, you know, with hypnosis or I can't be hypnotized, right. then not the subconscious program that's running in the back of the mind. I can recognize that as a practitioner and I can do my very best to control out, delete that program that's running. But ultimately, you know, um, I have a little bit of time to do that. I don't have like a lot of time to do that as a practitioner. Sure. And I'll give you an example. I, it was actually one of my favorite sessions. It turned out to be, but I sat down with this young lady and she's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. And my ego, my ego blocks everything. And right away, I'm like, okay, there's a program. I'm like, oh, that's not necessarily true. Why would you say that? You know, um, you know your ego you know, wants to, you know, to help you as, as well. It's a part of you, even though it has a bad rep. She's like, no, he, he, he blocks everything. He sabotages and he, he doesn't let me know things. Mm. So as soon as we get into hypnosis, <laughs> what's the first thing that she says when we tried it when we were going into the past life is, oh, no, this is the ego. I'm like, oh, here we go. Mm. <laughs> so it's like the program that she was telling herself and that she had come to believe manifested in the session. But the, se- the session was actually, Absolutely amazing because I got to talk with an ego for two hours and we got some really cool information um, about, you know, like the ego was like, no, I'm not going to let her see that. And I was like, well, why? Well, because then I'm going to lose my power. And I was like, oh. but don't you want to show us your power? If you show us your power and how powerful you are by answering her question, that's going to prove your power. Oh, okay. Well, and then it would start to give us a little bit of information and then it would say, no, 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 I'm not going to tell you that. Well, why? Well, I'm protecting her. Well, why do you want to protect her? What are you protecting her from? Don't you already do that? So it was like a very interesting session. I had to really like change the whole way that I talked to her. But we got all the information. We had a, we had a successful past life. Um, you know, the ego kind of, as we kept going throughout the process, would, I've also sensed that the subconscious was trying to come through and the ego and there's a little struggle. But it was very interesting. She had a great session, and it's one of my personal favorite sessions I've actually ever had. Wow. So, but the whole point was to talk about those programs and what we're telling ourselves. So, if we tell ourselves, "I don't know if I can," I, I don't think I can, then that might manifest in the session. Sure, I can do what I can to try to, you know, overcome that programming. But <laughs> that sounds incredible having these conversations with the ego. Yeah. I mean. What I yeah. found interesting is that she mentioned the ego was a he. So I'm curious if there was some underlying something that happened with her in some male figure that, that you know, the the negative space was the ego. And, and, mm-hmm. and she, she named it a he. That's interesting because usually, yeah. usually you think a, a woman would say, my ego, it, you know, referred, it's part of you. So she would refer to it as a she, but that's... You know, that's interesting that you bring that up. I don't know if I actually addressed that with her. I would assume it could just be, you know, society or programming. Mm. I'm not sure. sure. Maybe there was something behind it. If I could go back and ask that, that's a good question. Yeah. But I didn't ask it. <laughs> I, mon- nominal fee. No yeah. worries. I, I'm happy to share my <laughs> questions with you. <laughs> <laughs> I also found something else about uh, QHHT that was really interesting to me. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's called a, a DNA vibrational upgrade. 
What can you tell us about that? And when we're in that quantum space, anything is possible. And one of my number one questions that clients come to me for is to see if there's any upgrades available in, in the body and is it DNA upgrades or activation of gifts. And so okay. when the higher self is scanning the body, we, I will ask, like, you know, Will wants to know if there's any upgrades available today. Can you upgrade the body? And when the subconscious scans, it'll come back and say, yes, yes, I can upgrade the body. Or it'll, it'll say, not now. It's not time. It won't do anything that it is not ready for. And that's another thing that I'd like to highlight is that the subconscious, the higher self, whatever name you want to give it, it takes care of us mm. and loves us very, very much. So it's never going to give us more than what we can handle or that we're ready for at that specific moment in time. Right. So sometimes my clients are able to receive those upgrades and those activations. And sometimes it's, it'll say it's, it's not ready. They're not ready yet. And um, so, yeah, it, it is one of the questions and it is possible. And I do what I find so fascinating is when the body does receive the upgrade, the body moves and in these very interesting and unique ways that, that you don't see typical body moving. Um, it'll just like, it'll start to rise and fall and move. And it, it's really interesting mm. to watch. It sounds like a Kundalini activation process. It, uh, I've yes. seen very, something very similar in, in a situation like that. I want to go back to the conversation that's going through you when you relax and you, you access imagination, it comes through. I would assume that it's similar to when you channel your own information, right? There have been times where I'm, I've been on the show and talking to someone and I don't remember at all what I say until I go back and listen to the show. And people have told me that's when I'm, I'm actually channeling the question or channeling the conversations and things like that. So I'm assuming it's kind of the same thing because my question would be certain answers that you said have come through sound yeah. like it, it would seem ludicrous coming from me saying, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I need to protect him, uh, something like that. Is it something that you, when you answer, when you're under hypnosis, you answer consciously, or do you literally step out and just words come out of you without you doing anything to it, to make it come out? I actually really like that question because I found actually that both is true. So there are some people who are more, have the ability to channel. And I find that those people go into um, to deeper hypnosis and oftentimes won't recall as much because they're, they're really surrendered and are channeling and receiving. They're open, very open to receive information. And I believe that information comes through from the Akashic records mm. when they're pulling that, that information. Like, I, I know it is. That's, that is where the information is coming from because it is the place of all knowledge and that and that's where they're able to receive those answers. And then oftentimes, you know, those clients too, um, again, other other beings or other things will, will come through. It's very common. Dolores pops into my sessions a lot. Ooh. Wow, no kidding. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. I, I had a client who didn't even know who Dolores was. And I'm like, there's some lady here <laughs> <laughs> who wants to talk with you. And <laughs> I was like, oh, and I was like, can you ask who she is? And then she's like, Dolor Dolores? <laughs> I'm like, yes. Oh. So yeah, you know, everybody's different. And then I also have some clients who who believe after the session that they remember everything. And I'm like, that may not necessarily be true, which is why we record everything. Because some people think that they, you know, that they remember everything. And then when they go back and listen to the recording, they definitely find that they do not. They might remember bits and pieces. Um, so I've find that there's two different types of people who experience, you know, the quantum hypnosis or there's two different, you know, experiences that can occur. One where they're in, you know, that deep, deep, you know, quantum state because they have the ability to just open up and surrender more. And then those who are slightly a little bit more aware. So the hypnosis is similar. I would say it's very similar to a deep meditation. It's like the sister or cousin of meditation. Sometimes you like when you're meditating, like you know you're meditating and you're sitting there and you might be receiving stuff and receiving downloads and information, but there's a part of you that's aware of what you're doing. Now, when you walked through the whole process a little bit earlier on in the show, and it yeah. does not seem like something that fits within a typical like 45 to 55 minute session on a oh, therapist. No. So how long is this session for this? Yeah, this is a, this is a journey. It is a healing journey. Sessions typically are four to five hours because, you know, again, the most important part is opening up and having a very deep conversation. So that's a good portion of the session. 
And then we are usually under hypnosis from two about two hours. And then after, not going to just, you know, wake you up and then be like, bye. So we do need to debrief and we chat a little, make sure you're good to drive. And because it's a lot of information that comes through. Sometimes people are like, what has happened? Like that was, you know, they're processing and integrating and you can see the you know, wheels turning. And so, yeah, it's about a four hour session. So when, when my clients book, you know, I do recommend like don't have any meetings planned or you know, any other things in your day, you just really want to allow yourself that day to process and integrate and go home. And I always tell people it's really important to listen to that recording, I say within 48 hours, because it does carry like the quantum healing messages and energy. Also, I'd like to touch on Will is that when we do these sessions is that the gateway is open for, I find it usually 48 hours, there is a stronger connection to the subconscious mind. And sometimes clients will receive answers that didn't come through in session. They will come through later, um, either like later that day or even in a dream. I did have one client who was a little bit closed off when he came to me. And I can tell body language, like the white knuckle clenching, just getting a little uncomfortable. And I was like, oh, man, I really hope that we're going to have a successful session. And um, not very common that the sessions are quote unquote duds for me. It's very, very slim to none, but I could see some of the telling tales beforehand because um, he really wasn't opening up. But, you know, I mentioned that the subconscious always knows what you need and it will take care of you. So he didn't get a lot of his questions answered. There was a lot of I don't knows, I don't knows, and really did my best to try to overcome it. And we came out of the session and he's like, all right, you know, I got, I got a lot of like what I was looking for. But there was one question particularly that didn't get answered. And it actually came to him that night in a dream. Really? So he, it was um, his father. He was looking to connect with his father. His father um, had passed away about six months prior. And he didn't get to say goodbye. And it was pretty tragic passing. And his dad came to him that night in a dream. Wow. And that hadn't, so I was, I, I knew it was just confirmation. And like, because sometimes when a client walks away I'm, and it would say that they didn't have like what I would consider a successful session. I'm like, wow, you know, I wonder why that happened, you know? And usually something will, will come through later for them. So. That's beautiful. So is there, mm -hmm. is there anyone that this would not be good for? Somebody maybe who struggles heavily with, with mental health, mm. I would say. Okay. Then we, we did do talk about that. Like, for instance, if somebody maybe is like, has schizophrenia or something like that, it may not necessarily be the, the best modality for, for somebody struggling with, with, with that. Gotcha. Jennifer, you are yeah. so wonderful to speak to. This conversation has <laughs> flowed so beautifully. We are sadly out of time, but before we go, is there anything that you feel called to share with the audience that we haven't touched on yet? You know, there's a, there's a lot going on right now and as well as hectic. And I feel like there's a lot of people, um, who maybe want to step into doing different lines of work or who are receiving a call to follow a more spiritual alignment or to help people. And if you are receiving that call, that is your life purpose. And don't be afraid to take the leap or the plunge. I myself was in a similar position when I was working in the banking industry and I was really scared to transition and I'm still here. And so, and I, I love what I do and my main mission is, is to help as many people as I can. Yeah. So be open to the call and don't be afraid. Thank you for that. We didn't even get a chance to touch on it. The fact you were an executive in the business sector and you just made, you just dropped everything and went into this field and that was, it took incredible courage yeah. uh, So on your part. So thank you. Congratulations. And um, I'm incredibly honored and delighted to have had the opportunity to talk to you today. Mm -hmm. If someone wanted to reach out to you, they wanted a session, what's the best way for them to get a hold yeah. of you? My website I'll give there is because there's a lot of information on my website and my website is the soul experiences.com and that is plural with an S at the end. I am on TikTok and Instagram and my handle is I am Jennifer Mitchell. Okay. We're going to add all those links directly to our show notes. So if you didn't get a chance to write those down, no worries. You can just go to skepticmetaphysician.com, go to her episode page. And you can find those links directly in her episode, in her show notes. Also, one thing we didn't talk about, want to touch on really quickly, is your podcast. You also are the host of a podcast that uh, is a lot of fun. So tell us about that. I can't believe I didn't mention that. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my my podcast is The Soul Traveler, and it's inspired by the many travels of the soul of my clients, mm. like these incredible missions and places that they're going. And so, yeah, um, 
if you're interested, you know, in, in all of this intriguing and amazing stuff that's going on in the world and quantum hypnosis or anything, uh, definitely give the show a listen to Soul Traveler. Oh, and do you have the, the people that, that your clients come and talk to, about, to you about their experience or do you recall them in uh, different stories or how does that, what's the format? A little bit of both. I've had a couple clients on specifically. I've had a couple of people who have encountered and recalled alien abductions under hypnosis. That was on my yeah, list to have... ask you and I forgot to ask you. Yeah. I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it was very shocking to them. They're like, what? Where am I? And so, yes, they've had um, this one on my very first episode. They had to have her on. I talk with other practitioners and other podcasters. You know, I just want to talk about everything. And anything I'm on a mission to explore. <laughs> yeah, sounds like a mission right up my alley as well. Jennifer, such a absolute pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much for coming and sharing of your wisdom with us and your expertise. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. It was such a pleasure, Will. And a huge thank you to you. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing the message we're sharing on the show, do them and us a favor and share the show with them. It will help get the word out about us and it might just change someone's life for the better. Well, that's all for now, but we'll see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysician. Until then, take care.